surrounding crypto replacing SWIFT. So we did speak yeah. earlier where you mentioned that it's not necessarily about replacing SWIFT, it's about complementing yeah. it. So let's yeah. get some more information on this. I used to work for SWIFT. I was SWIFT for 20 years. So SWIFT is flowing through my veins. SWIFT is the pre preeminent messaging system for the financial industry. And I think um, we we're also seeing that SWIFT are changing their, their network capability. So that real time will be a possibility as, there, uh, as well. But we may also see Ripple XRP moving across the SWIFT network as a currency when we're perhaps using something like FX. Now, so, I, I just, just slightly moving on for a second. Um, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you to day as ladies and gentlemen this is why we continue to say in the xrp community that we believe xrp will play a role in the next financial system a 20 year long swift employee goes on the record and lets us know that ripples xrp could very well replace swift by complimenting it isn't that interesting and in my personal opinion, Leia Helpern, because she is more Bitcoin minded, did not do the correct job she needed to do. Because in reality, if I had that opportunity, I would have pushed to find out the correct answers. But there is this tribal mindset in the Bitcoin community that makes it that if any other crypto succeeds, then Bitcoin will fail. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe all tides rise in crypto and Jay from spend the bits in my opinion is going to revolutionize Bitcoin right here on the XRP ledger. Keep that all in your minds. The XRP community has the facts on their side. Now we see here from the blockchain backer a massive warning as the Dow Jones is now setting a lower low. And we may be in for that seismic bombshell of a crash that I've been warning about for the past couple weeks now. That moment is likely approaching, especially with this lower low. And the fundamentals back it up. We've seen that bankruptcy filings have recently reached levels on par with the 08 Great Recession and the recent health crisis. And this is an initial indicator of the demise we may feel soon. In addition, we have a government shutdown looming, escalations in Ukraine, student loan repayments coming back, and $90 oil. Fed Chair Jerome Powell thought he was managing strides and in managing inflation, but he's now facing a five-point threat to the economy. And in my opinion, there's going to be a shock in the system a potential event and the reason i've been saying this for so long is because the financial system has been talking to me it's been talking to all of us there are cracks and leaks everywhere and you have to be aware of your surroundings the evergrand crisis continues to worsen as defaults continue to pile up and their ex-CEO has been detained. Whenever you see things like this, you know shit is about to hit the fan. And I believe that with the return of Steven Naroff, shit might be about to hit the fan for Ethereum, the initial founders, and the insider whales. I want you all to listen to this interview Crypto Eddie posted on her Twitter of Steven Naroff. And his case being dropped post-indictment. To me, it seems like the facts are on Steven Naroff's side. And I can't wait to see all the implications this man is going to have moving forward. The Ripple decision was adverse to the commission. The SEC has to learn from that and say, okay, we've lost this. And again, they're going to appeal it. But as things stand today, June, I would say they need to reflect upon that. And take a step back and say, okay, how do we modify our strategy from here? 
of course, Ripple is going to be appealed, and that probably will get all the way up to the Supreme Court, I would think, because it's such an important issue, not just in terms of the law, but in terms of the future of the American financial markets. So that's, let's call it unsettled at this time. And of course, Jed Rakoff is absolutely a living legend when it comes to federal securities law. But what it demonstrates is that you can have two judges of equal rank in the same district and disagree, and they're allowed to do that. And there's about another 25 judges in Southern District, and they could also all disagree. That's why the real key is going to be, let's see what happens when Ripple and the Rakoff decision, I don't recall which case it was, goes up to the Second Circuit, because they're there to conciliate these and to reconcile one decision to the other. And then they get the next-to-last word. And why I say next-to-last word is because they could still go to the U.S. Supreme Court. But let's also keep in mind, as the Supreme Court itself said decades ago, they regard the Second Circuit as the, quote, mother court, close quote, of the federal securities laws. They are very deferential to what the Second Circuit says. So the battle or the controversy is far from over June. This is just one of many battles, and we have to see what the Second Circuit says about Ripple and these related cases in the years to come. And so I think really bottom line is that everybody's going to go great guns. Crypto is on a roll. It's not going to stop. Okay, Gary Gensler wants to make sure his agency is regulating this, and that's consistent with his personal behavior because he regulated it as the head of the CFTC not too long ago. A lot of action, a lot of controversy in the years to come. This is just one stop. Okay, my advice is everybody have a good Labor Day weekend because the battle's going to start as soon as we get back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right there, you had a powerful conversation of where Ripple and the SEC could go in the coming months. This is extremely important because, like I've been saying before, I'll say again, the only thing that mattered to us, the XRP army, is that XRP was deemed a non-security. And now I want this case to continue to drag out. I want it to go to the Supreme Court. I want crypto to be given law of the land by one of the most powerful bodies in the United States. And I want them to leave Gary out to dry. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through so much for so long, and we're being vindicated more and more every single day. We've been right about Ethgate. We've been right about Ripple. And most of all, we're going to be right about XRP. XRP just needs the price to prove and validate everything we've been saying. And I think this next bull run XRP is going to be one of the leaders in price action. Now guys, to cap off this video for today, I'm going to leave you with yet another clip Crypto Eddie posted recently of David Schwartz from 2015 talking about XRP. And I think going back in time as much as she did to find this is going to give a great perspective for all of us and our favorite CEO speaking about what the future of XRP holds. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy it, as I have a very special video coming out for all of you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. David is the chief cryptographer at Ripple Labs and one of the architects of the Ripple Protocol. David, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here, John. Well, for people who understand Bitcoin, a simple way to understand Ripple is Ripple is very much like Bitcoin, except that it can allow you to move any currency or any asset. Okay. So it's, it's a distributed payment system. It doesn't require any central authority, but it can move any asset. So dollars, it can move cross-currency, cross-border. Okay. It's essentially targeted at use cases like cross-border payments, correspondent banking, those kinds of things. Okay. Ripple, is, Ripple was designed from the very beginning to handle multiple assets. Mm -hmm. And so it has um, things like order books and Forex implemented natively. It has atomic payments so that you can use a longer path without having to worry about an intermediary failing to perform. So it was specifically built to solve the issues that exist in cross-currency and cross-border payments. See, in fact, one of the major use cases for the Ripple network right now is moving Bitcoins around because it provides faster settlement. Mm -hmm. So if 
if you believe in Bitcoin as a currency, Ripple is a good way to move that currency around. It's not a competitor. So it happens automatically when you make a payment. The network finds the cheapest path. That might be through XRP. It might not. It could be through US dollars. It could be through Bitcoin. There could be multiple paths that you draw from so that you get the very best offers on multiple order books. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be consciously aware unless you really drilled into what was happening behind the scenes. You wouldn't necessarily be consciously aware of what intermediary currencies you held for a notional split second. Mm -hmm. But because XRP can flow between any two accounts and is trustless, it has a privileged position inside the Ripple network that could cause it to be preferred as an intermediary currency. I see. If that happens, demand will go up. I see. Now, what if it doesn't happen? It certainly might not. It could be that, for example, the Federal Reserve decides to issue dollars directly onto the Ripple network, and everybody thinks that's the perfect intermediary currency, and then XRP doesn't get that kind of role, in which case you would not see that increase in demand. I see. Is it possible that just as the USD is the the reserve currency of the world right now against what a lot of people would like to see. Is it possible that the USD could eventually be the reserve currency of the Ripple protocol, Ripple network? It's certainly possible. You could also see another government, any country could do this, introducing, let's say, gold, 100% reserve-backed gold on the Ripple network. And people might decide, ooh, that's what I want to use as my reserve currency because I, you know, maybe the government of China, let's say, does that and people trust them. There's certainly any number of ways this could play out. To some extent, Ripple Labs has bet on XRP. Ripple Labs holds an enormous number of XRP and our primary business model is that they'll appreciate in the future. But of course, there's no guarantee. I see. So now that concept that the US dollar could be the reserve currency of Ripple, of course, you know that people hearing this show and hearing that, if they've not heard that before, talk about Ripple's right? Talk about ripples going out. That's going to cause a lot of people to be afraid and to think, wow, we don't want ripple because the U.S. government, I'm sure now, since they heard this episode of Bitcoins and Gravy, they're on to it for the first time. You know, they're slow, they're sleeping usually. Now they're going to work as hard as they can to get the U.S. dollar to be the reserve currency of ripple. And we're back to the same place we were before ripple and Bitcoin and all of this. What do you say to someone like that? Well, they have to compete in a fair playing field. So the intermediary currency could be the U.S. dollar and you can still hold whatever currency you want. You right. can hold Bitcoin, you can hold Ripples, and that would just be where the liquidity is. And they would have to compete on a completely fair playing field because people don't choose intermediary currencies. They just make payments with the cheapest path they can find. Wow. So it's going to be competitive just like it is um, – outside the Ripple network, except people will be able to move more easily between currencies. So if one currency has a small advantage that only affects a narrow group of people, they can still hold that currency without having the large cost that they would normally have to bear from making a different choice. I see. So it, it does enable more freedom of choice with currency. And in that kind of market, it remains to be seen what will be the preferred currency. It could be Bitcoins. You know, why aren't people just using this all the time? It seems like this is, if you're talking about it being that quick and that cheap and that flexible, it just seems like a no-brainer to me. It is. You need three pieces for it to work. The person who's making the payment needs an easy way to get cash in. The person who's receiving the payment needs an easy way to get cash out, and someone has to provide the liquidity between the two assets if they're not the same asset. And so we're working on building up those pieces. And when you have the right pieces, a remittance pathway will emerge even without somebody you know, having to do anything special to make it happen.